uh, I would like to invite the speakers to uh, come to the table and, um, and then we have a short uh, discussion about the various presentations. Yes, I, I will try to speak uh, loud and clearly and uh, if you cannot understand me, you just give an answer that you think is appropriate given the context. Uh, so, Ray, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, so, the first question that, that I would like to ask to, uh, to open the floor is uh, actually to Santiago. Um, at the opening plenary, uh, we did not really get into the possibility for you to provide a view on Inspire from, uh, from the outside. So, I would like to ask you to give your appreciation of Inspire from the point of view uh, of, uh, of, of your activities. Thank you, Paul. Uh, probably I will start by recalling that at the plenary, I only had time to say that I have observed Inspire from uh, its beginning, its reality today, and what is being projected beyond today's inspired situation. And that, for that reason, today I start, I start by making emphasis on the institutional framework for the realization of Geosur, because that is a significant difference. You have a, a well-established, defined framework, and from that framework, you are building a reality connecting that framework with the geographic information and spatial data for Europe. In the case of the Americas, we are not going to have that kind of framework. That is not a clear possibility in the short term, but we have to accept this reality and try to adjust what is the reality of the institutional and legal framework to constitute and to realize the SDI vision. We have a lot to learn. And as one of the presenters, you, we are not going to reinvent and we are not going to duplicate what already has been conceived properly and we can take advantage of your experience. So I guess there is a whole potential here for cooperation, collaboration, and to contribute to global integration of data sets if the work we advance in the Americas is someone consistent and align what is being advanced here in Europe. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to offer the audience the possibility to ask questions. Uh, is there anyone who would like to raise a question? Uh, yes, Francesco, can you tell me? Uh, question for last presenter, uh, Ray Bruzlowski. Um, you are implementing USPAR and uh, UK location at the same time, and you said that, you know, I would like to know if you are satisfied with the involvement of uh, private sector and commercial sector in UK, and if there is any, if yes, uh, if there is any concrete actions that we can do at European level also that can be applicable to other member states and to inspire and the, uh, the wider policy areas in general. Thank you. Okay. Um, integration with the, uh, working with the, uh, the private sector. That works. Hopefully it's working now. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I think the, uh, the important step is, first step is to, is to start the engagement and uh, you know, consider those uh, sort of private sector interest areas that, that, that uh, may be willing to, uh, um, uh, to talk to you and uh, you know you have some, some interests. Uh, so you know, we can think of uh, uh, the insurance sector, uh, the retail sector, um, infrastructure um, and sort of various other uh, elements within the private sector, but there are also uh, suppliers into uh, the industry who, uh, uh, you know, from the
the industry who are, are, are really important as, uh, as well. Within the UK, we've um, you know, set up a, a user group and uh, we set up subgroups uh, to uh, uh, support particular interests. So we, we have a retail sector subgroup and that's led to a, a mandate uh, coming from, from them. And uh, you know, we see exciting opportunities in you know, areas such as, uh, uh, as uh, infrastructure, uh, you know, where there are some uh, large projects in the, in the UK, and that's UK policy to invest in, in infrastructure um, and help deliver growth uh, through that as well as, well as uh, you know, deliver uh, important new infrastructure. While we're doing that, you know, let's make uh, great use of uh, you know, the opportunity to, you know, when, we, when we're digging up the roads, you know, to do other things as, uh, uh, as well and look at some of the cross-cutting things that we can do, uh, but share information in, in, in doing that. So uh, you know, it's fairly early days uh, in moving from that demand from the supply model, sorry, to the, to the demand model. Uh, but, uh, you know, we we're taking some steps that uh, are, uh, are really important. Thank you. I would like to um, go on this topic a little bit further. Uh, I understand that you made a survey within the UK about, uh, about the benefit for, uh, for the entire sector. Uh, can you say something about uh, the benefit of the UK location program and, uh, and the Inspire implementation for small and medium-sized enterprises? Uh, yes, I mean, if, if you're a, um, I mean, that particular survey uh, was uh, sort of largely with the supply industry rather than the recipient uh, industry. And uh, you know, those uh, supply organizations, small to medium organizations, uh, are going to get some benefit from Inspire. There is uh, all that data and services being published, data uh, and services much more accessible, uh, so they can uh, build their own added value services uh, much, more, much more cheaply. Uh, the survey recognized, uh, uh, I mean, I forget the exact figures, but uh, I think 90% of the organizations uh, recognize there will, will be uh, an impact and uh, over 50% recognized uh, that impact would uh, be very positive on their bottom line. So uh, uh, that's an early survey and we'll continue to run surveys like that as, uh, uh, you know, as things progress. And in that context, I think it's important to be aware of uh, a project funded by DG Connect, which is called SME Spire. And that project is aiming at um, getting a good picture of the European landscape uh, for SMEs in connection with Inspire and uh, location-related uh, information and services. Um, so if, if people are interested in this uh, type of discussion, then, um, then please come and see me so that we can make the links. Are there other questions from the uh, audience? Yes, there on the back. Thank you, Paul. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Dave Lovell, Eurogeographics. And thank you to all three speakers who presented on very different topics in very different contexts. Um, I've got a question that I'd like each of them to respond to, please. Um, this morning, I read an article published in the Financial Times, a paper that many of you will have seen across the world. It's an article written by a journalist who attended the GMES in Action Conference. And what great opportunity that is that an international journalist is attending such a conference. He starts his article by saying, I was struck by two things. I was drowning in a sea of incomprehensible acronyms. The second thing that struck me was our current malaise to talk about really important things in the language of deadly technocratic dullness. Would each speaker like to tell us how we might overcome this tendency? Thank you. Thank you for this question. Um, I would like to make a comment. I'm very pleased 
to hear those words from Dave as he is the elected president for the Global Spatial Data Infrastructure and I guess he will have the opportunity to apply and to take into practice those words. <laughs> that will be my, my first comment. And <laughs> okay, and the second part of my comment is that I was referring in my first, in my previous comment to the commonalities we may have with INSPIRE to collaborate, cooperate, and to share, to promote the sharing. But the focus, what really connects us, is this awareness about sustainable development. That is, that is, in the end, what is important, and I think it is really simple for us to understand that we ha what we have to do, it will be worthwhile if it has a consequence on this sustainable development challenge. Thank you. Are there other panelists that want to comment? Um, I guess we can't use maps and pictures all the time. Um, maybe we should uh, invest uh, a little bit more effort in learning mime. Uh, but um, you're right, language is, uh, is, I mean, is the basis of uh, communication. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we've got to communicate in the language of, uh, of those that we're talking to. So, uh, if the people we are talking to are engineers who understand uh, those acronyms, acronyms, then use those acronyms. Why not? Why not? But, uh, you know, in my presentation, I was talking about uh, uh, getting uh, communication uh, with uh, non-specialists, with, with, with policy makers. Uh, so, you have to communicate in the language that, uh, uh, no, that, that, that they can understand. Uh, and you've not got to just translate what you have in their language, you've got to understand you know, their real policy and business issues and get to the, get to the bottom of those and talk in that language. Thank you. Uh, John, do you want to comment? Would you like to comment on this aspect? No? <laughs> Very good. I Eric, perhaps? Yes, I'd like to tell you a short story, actually, of, of uh, my experience with Hillsur. Um, you know, we were doing Hillsur. I work in the Vice Presidency of Infrastructure in CAF, so they're very keen on infrastructure, and SDI rang a bell because, you know, infrastructure, infrastructure, so they said, well, you know, it makes sense to, for us to work on this. But the Vice President of the whole institution of CAF, you know, we spoke to him. He wasn't very sure what we were doing. He thought it was interesting, but then, a couple of years ago, we started doing um, a hydrological potential evaluation in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, using DM, you know, using SDI concepts and evaluating in the river network of Sao Paulo uh, the hydropower potential. And I, I encountered him once in a corridor, and he said, now I understand you, so, you know, you're doing something practical, because, so I go back to your comment, you know, you really have to do things that are practical, that are visible and that actually have an impact, like, like Santiago was saying. So I think we have to empathize, uh, have more emphasis on those type of, uh, of applications to, to bring the SDI concept uh, clearly to, to decision makers. I think that that is an excellent comment to conclude with. Uh, so thank you all for your, uh, for your participation. I would like to uh, applaud the speakers for their interesting presentations.